Just how many commits are the Florida Gators about to get? Find out here on Locked On Gators. You are Locked On Gators, your daily podcast on the Florida Gators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Gators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Gators your first listen of the day. We are available daily and free wherever you listen to podcasts. Happy Thursday. It's going to be a big day. I'm Brandon Wilson. Find me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find my written work with Whole Nine Sports. It's W-H-O-L-E and I N E Sports. Find us on YouTube, Giants Country as well. And... We're, get, we're getting into it today. I'm going to let you know that. Uh, but just quickly, an early reminder that tonight, for however many commits there are, there's John Walker, Derek LeBlanc, and um, there's also Jakeem Jackson scheduled tonight. If all three of them are Gators, I will be going live after every one. If only one of them is Gator, I will go live after that one. Um, and yeah, so that that's going to be the plan for tonight, which means that Instead of a new episode tomorrow, it is going to be that because also tomorrow afternoon, Aiden Mizell is committing. And if Aiden Mizell commits, then I will be going live after his commitment. So there's potentially going to be four videos coming out in the next day. Um, so so that's, that's how we're doing it, where instead of a brand new episode, we'll, we'll have that coming out. Uh, I think that's the plan. Maybe it, Maybe it'll change. But for now, the plan is... Tonight, there will be videos after commitments, if there should be any commitments. And then tomorrow, only Aiden Mizell's commitment, if he commits, which we're thinking he will. But until then, I'm making predictions. Just I'm, I'm going to have fun doing this, so why not? But I'm doing this in order of who's predicting tonight. John Walker is, predict- is uh, committing at 5, so John Walker is the first person I'm trying to commit, of course, that I'm trying to predict. Of course, defensive linemen, very highly touted all around. Uh, UCF, Florida, Ohio State are all in there. Um, I think he's a UCF kid. I I don't know what it is, but something about everything I've seen with John Walker so far, talking to John Garcia, talking about, or talking to anybody about John Walker, it seems like it's kind of a toss up, but he's also this like homegrown kid that kind of wants to stay with UCF, which I get. Um, that that's a fine thing. He's a very quiet and low key recruit, and I can't blame him necessarily. And the thing that I I see constantly with Florida fans, with Florida State fans, with Miami fans, is this constant talking down on Central Florida as a place where recruits shouldn't want to go there. They shouldn't be attracted to go there. They, they shouldn't think about it, mainly because it's a group of five school. And people are, like, they're acknowledging, like, oh, like, it, they're going to be a power five school, but not yet. That doesn't matter, because the recruiting that we're talking about is for the 2023 cycle. And guess what? That, that's when That's when it's happening. Central Florida will be a Big 12 school in 2023. That, that'll be their first year there. So players like John Walker or like formerly Isaiah Nixon, who flipped from UCF to Florida, players like Walker and Nixon, they were never going to play in the AAC to begin with. That, that was never a thing that was going to happen for them. They'll be playing in the Big 12. So I think maybe one of the biggest arguments that Florida had with UCF was SEC to, AC, to AAC, I mean, ACC as well is also a big drop off, but SEC to AAC, um, that that's closed now because it's Big Twelve, and they, this argument of you know UCF being little brother, they are still little brother. They will continue to be little brother. They will always be little brother to the Florida Gators. But the argument of they're not a big university, they don't play big boy football. That argument needs to get thrown out by again, not just Florida fans, but Florida State and Miami fans. This ain't this this ain't your mother's UCF. This ain't your father's UCF. This is the new school UCF. This is new school college football. This is what realignment is doing. And UCF also, by the way, you know, 
we we touched on it with John Garcia uh, this week, where we were saying not only is it moving to the Big Twelve, but they've also got Gus Malzahn. They've got a national championship coach there. Like this is not a team to scoff at. UCF, they're threatening. I think that they're going to get John Walker. I'll be ecstatic if he's a Gator, but I think he's going to be a Knight, which happens again that's what it happens you, you can't win them all is the approach that i tend to take with these things i think there are certain ones where you really should 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 win like malik bryant yesterday who committed to miami but i mean there are some things where john walker someone that i've never penciled in as a gator and i think he's gonna be a knight simple as that uh it, it's prepare for the worst hope for the best you know Next up is Derek LeBlanc, who we spoke about a little bit with John Garcia. I believe we spoke with him on Tuesday's episode. Um, the prediction for Derek LeBlanc for me is going to be Oklahoma. And, and John Garcia spoke about this as well, where it's a little bit different from John Walker because Derek LeBlanc's uh, recruitment has been wild so far. But it feels like over the past few weeks, it's seeming more and more likely that Derek LeBlanc will be in Oklahoma sooner. Um, it's been one of the worst kept secrets on, on Twitter. It's been going around. You know, he's been retweeting Oklahoma things, but not Florida things. He's, he's been doing a lot of Oklahoma-oriented uh, social media work. So it seems like he's going to be a sooner. But on top of that also, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> if what Derek LeBlanc is doing is one of those things that we've seen so often with uh, with Joe Anello Guerrero, you know, deleting everything except Florida pictures, with Peyton Kirkland, of which we know now, if you listen to yesterday's episode, was his own fault. But with Peyton Kirkland, you know, posting Miami, Michigan State, Oklahoma, Florida, and then going to Texas and Joan Aguero doing the Florida pictures and then going to Georgia and uh, Roger Kearney taking the visit to Florida, knowing he was going to Florida State and then committing to Florida State uh, pretty much Im immediately after his visit. So unless Derek LeBlanc is doing one of these things that these recruits love now, which is the same thing as the, you know, oh, I'm going to put this hat on. Ah, I'm grabbing this hat. It's the same thing. Um, unless he's doing that, I think he's going to be in Oklahoma sooner. But again, I said it with Joe Aguero and I said it with Peyton Kirkland where I'm prepared for this to be a little bit of a flip. They, they like doing it. It gets more social media engagement. It gets crowds riled up. It, it's something that they like doing. Um, so, so unless he's, if he's doing that, then he'll be a Gator. If he's not doing that, he'll be a sooner, but I don't think he's doing that. I think Derek LeBlanc has every intention of being in Oklahoma sooner. Uh, based on what I've heard with uh, Florida's approach to things, the Gators' approach to things, and Derek LeBron's recruitment, everything I've heard is that he will be in Oklahoma sooner. And that shouldn't, sh that shouldn't shock you. That shouldn't surprise you. That's not this wild, wild thing happening. It, it, it's not shocking. Uh, but we're about to get into some uh, more predictable recruitments. But first, a quick word from Bet Online because if you think the Florida Gators will win seven or more games like I do, and like a lot of the fan base does, then bet the over. If you think that Florida will win six or less games, which you'd be dumb to bet that, bet the under. Right now on Bet Online, the Gators' win total is set at six and a half. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your betting needs and sports information. And I've been using Bet Online for five, almost six years now. I couldn't be happier with it. I, I I love it. I love how it works out. And I, I honestly like the interface. It used to be bad. They've changed it. It's great now. It's got so much, not just football, basketball, baseball, hockey, soccer, boxing, MMA, table tennis, darts, actual tennis, which I've said before is dead to me now. Um, cricket, whatever snooker is. I think that's the name of one of the things. Whatever that is, um, they have it. it. It's got so much. Um, you could bet on politics, economics, uh, aliens invading. You could bet on anything you want, really. It, it's insane, and it's insanely entertaining. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn all about the trends and action. Check out Bet Online. to where the game starts. Thanks again for making Lockdown Gators your first listen of the day. We are available daily and free wherever you listen to the podcast. Now we're making more predictions. And again, these are, as much as I hate using this redundant word, predictable. They're, they're more predictable. First up is Jakeem Jackson, the four-star defensive back. Um, 
prediction Florida. I think I think that's what everybody is doing. Uh, Florida over the past three weeks to a month with Jakeem Jackson have really started picking up steam, and everybody's gone. Okay, this like I, at this point, this is Florida's battle to lose, and I don't think that they will lose it. He's a climbing defensive back that's going to add defensive ability to an already very strong defensive class everywhere but linebacker right now. So far, Florida has a guy at pretty much every position but linebacker on the defensive side of the ball. Jakeem Jackson, kind of, kind of defensive back style is what we'll list him as. Uh, so, so I think he's climbing, but I think he's going to be a Gator. This is one of those ones where he's committing tonight at 7 Eastern time. Um I think, yeah, I think this one is likely going to be a gator hat that's getting put on or a gator shirt getting revealed. Or I'll continue to be cynical and go, maybe this is one of those things where everyone's like, ah, he's going to be a gator. And then he commits somewhere that no one was expecting. Who even knows, honestly, at this point? Who's who's to say? Um, this, this is the first year of mine that's like in-depth covering recruiting. And... It's not giving me grace. I'm just balding quicker than I already was. It's, it's just it, I I'm so fed up with the the little ah, ah, things that that recruits do with switching the hats and the shirts and then the posting and all this. I feel like old man yells at cloud, but it's it's not even that I'm like mad at it. I'm just like I keep falling for it, and that irritates me. Um, <laughs> that's what it is. Uh, that's what's getting me fed up here. But I think Jakeem Jackson is a relative lock to be a Florida Gator. Then tomorrow, there's Aiden Early. Mizell is committing at 2.30, and most of us agree that he's likely going to be a Florida Gator. But, we, I mean, we've seen Alabama steal legacy kids before. We've seen legacy kids this cycle not go to, not go to continue the legacy. We've seen that happen before, and that's not – surprising necessarily like, like like it's surprising at the moment but at the same time it's like do you really have to go where your parents went like I, I get that there's some sort of camaraderie camaraderie there but is it really like I feel like it's a great argument to make that it's a legacy kid um and they should feel this extra connection to it but at the same time I think Aiden Mizell is just going to be a gator like, I think the way everything is trended is he's going to be a gator would shock the world if he didn't, so maybe, but I, th- I think he'll be a Gator. Uh, that, that's kind of always been the feel. I don't, I don't think it's changed. And, I mean, John Garcia, um, I believe on Tuesday's episode, we were talking about Aiden Mizell, and he was kind of saying that Aiden Mizell would be the, the key piece to this receiving class that Florida's brought in so far with Eugene Wilson III, with Creed Whitmore, with Tyreek Patterson, um, that Aiden Mizell would be the alpha dog. He called him the Jamar Chase type. Like he, he like he's that headliner that you got. Like you've got Eugene Wilson as your slot receiver. Who again, you know, slot receivers could be your number one receiver. We see it especially now in the NFL all the time. But that's not what we're talking about in this case. We're talking about Eugene Wilson, slot receiver. Uh, Tyreek Patterson, more of the X receiver type. Uh, Creed Whitmore is literally just like an athlete right now. Like he's been playing quarterback, so he's going to be learning to play receiver. He might be an offensive weapon type more than anything else. And then, uh, you've got Aiden Mizell, who's going to be your legitimate number one receiver. And even John Garcia was saying, you know, after that, at that point, when you're looking at receivers for Florida, cause Florida is in on, on quite a few guys like Andy Jean and some other uncommitted, uh, recruits that are blue chip receivers. Um, at that point, it's just a cherry on top. Like after this, you need probably one more good guy. But then after that, it's pretty much cherry on top territory. And hey, I I ain't got a problem with cherries there. I, that's a lie. I don't like cherries. Um, that's just that's just what we're doing on this episode. We're being really open here. Um, and that's that's how we're doing it. But yeah, um, I think Aiden Mizell will be a Florida Gator. I'm hoping he will be. I'll be very ecstatic if he will be. He's committing tomorrow at 2.30. And then Jordan Castle is the last person. Safety, do-it-all type. The prediction, I think, is Florida, and I think that's fair. It's simple. Like, I realize first segment, no Florida. Second segment is Florida. That's literally just the order of their commitments. It's it's not like I set that up. Um, 
But I think with Jordan Castle, it's he's he's uh, he's been a he's been a guy where we've kind of silently accepted that he's going to be a Gator. That that's kind of been the approach where it's like, okay, we'll we'll hold to your commitment date, but we all think you're going to be a Gator. Um, and it's not like we do that with every commit. Like it's not like every Florida fan that like, we do that with every commit where we're like, okay, Billy Brian, we get it. You're going to be a Gator. Like it's it's not like Florida does that with every fan. With every uh, recruit, some Gators fans do, but it's not. That's not this case. Jordan Castle has always been favored toward Florida, and that hasn't changed. And I mean, initially he had the recruitment date set for October first to honor the passing of his father, uh, but he's moved that up now. And it's always been kind of said where if he moves up that recruitment date or that commitment date, he's almost definitely a Gator. Um, and so I, th- I think that's what it is where it's like, well, he, he's moving up the, rec- the commitment date so we can all kind of just go with the flow and say, he's a Gator, cool beans, like, like we get it. Uh, so, I mean, this weekend is going to be big. Florida is going to finish July strong, more likely than not. There's also Dequavia Sori who doesn't have a commitment date set yet. But he's, I mean, everybody's like, he's crystal ball to Florida at this point. Like, like it's very much expected. Um, Florida's going to finish July strong, more likely than not. And then in August, we'll take a look at the Miami-Florida State uh, battles compared to Florida. And we'll see how that goes. And we'll, and we'll see how that's going. Obviously, Miami is still going to be number one. Um, in that list, they're not number one right now. And I know Malik Bryant was like, they're going to finish number one. No, they ain't. Uh, simple as that. No, they aren't. Cause things are going to happen. Kids from Miami are going to decommit. Other kids are going to flip and change and, and everything's, everything's going to happen. Um, I don't think, I don't think Miami will be number one. I don't think Miami will finish top five. I do think that they'll finish top 10 to 12, but I don't think they'll finish top five. Uh, but we're about to take a look at the tight end room because everybody is, losing their minds about tight end recruiting. Um, and we're about to talk about it. And we're about to take a seat back and, and take a little, um, a, a more wide view of the tight end room. But first, a quick word from our sponsors. To wrap up today's show, like I said, we're talking about this tight end room. We've talked about the tight ends multiple times this off season, especially since Billy Napier got hired. And it's like, hey, like Florida's going to have a lot of two tight end sets. 12 personnel has been the thing. One running back, two tight ends. We're going to see that a ton. We're going to see 12 personnel at a, at a single back, at a shotgun, at a pistol, out of everything. We're going to see it. Um, that's that's what we want to see, by the way. That's what Billy Napier likes. That's what Rob Sale likes. And then make it happen. Um, especially with William Peekler as a tight ends coach. He's a phenomenal recruiter, so I'm, not, I'm really not worried about tight end recruiting. Um, that's just not something that I'm concerned about. And I mean, we've talked about them as scheme fits. We've talked about the roster in general. We've talked about who's going to step up, who's going to fall behind. We've done it all. And guess what? We're not done yet. Like we're going to continue talking about tight ends because it is tied for my favorite position on offense with running back. Um, So we're going to keep doing it. But I, I want to make this very clear. My stance on tight end recruiting for 2023, there is zero need to stress the 2023 tight end class. Um, it's just not how it is. First of all, similar to quarterback, I was told Florida is not going to go deep into the well for tight ends right now. Maybe later they'll add some three or four stars later on in the process. But right now, Florida is not uh, prioritizing tight end, nor should they. That's the thing. Florida should prioritize more linemen, linebackers, um, always add DBs, always add pass rushers, all that. Florida should prioritize. I don't think Florida needs to prioritize uh, quarterback if Marcus Stokes stays in. I don't think Florida needs to prioritize uh, running back right now because I think most of the room will be back next year. And I don't think Florida needs to prioritize tight ends right now. Um, that's, that's just how it is. Primarily because in 2022, so this coming season, Florida will have – Two upperclassmen in Keon Zipper, who is uh, projected to be either tight end one or tight end two. But again, with uh, with the amount of time that Florida is going to have 12 personnel, that's going to be one of the starting spots. So Keon Zipper is there. And Griffin McDowell probably won't play much, if at all. 
but he's still in the room. New upperclassmen tight ends, as in two tight ends that, that changed two or two non tight ends that changed two tight end for the season, Noah Keeter and Dante Zanders. And Dante Zanders is the other guy that we talk about starting opposite Keon Zipper. Um, my understanding has been that Dante Zanders has been the uh, inline tight end and Keon Zipper has been the move tight end lately. Um, that, that's been my understanding so far. Uh, that's is do do with that what you will. Um, young tight ends that have been here before in Nick Elksness and Jonathan Odom, who I mean Jonathan Odom more the blocking type, Nick Elksness more the receiving type. That that's again already established. But then you look at the kids that are joining the roster this year or have already joined the roster, and Florida's got a lot of them. Florida's got two got of two got four brand new tight ends for the 2022 season. And they're all people to be excited about. Uh, Hayden Hansen is the one that I'm probably most excited about. We've, we've had him on the show last week. It was a great one last Monday. Uh, it'll come out. as just like a bonus episode this weekend. If you want to watch it and just that and not the rest of the content. Um, so Hayden Hansen, who's quarterback that moved to tight end and has been a blocking dream for Florida uh, so far. That's Hayden Hansen, and, and he's there. He's more the inline tight end. Arliss Boardingham played receiver slash tight end, so he's obviously more the move tight end, and he's there. And those are kind of the two headlining tight ends from this class. And there's Scott Isaacs from Metter. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm going to try to pronounce it horribly. Uh, Metter Air? I think that's how you pronounce it in Louisiana. Sorry, I'm so bad with pronouncing city names. Um so there's Scott Isaacs. And then 2022 has another offensive line, has another tight end commit that was an offensive lineman when he was getting recruited. Um, but the rumor for him is that he won't be on campus until December because something with his school, not necessarily academically ineligible, but just that he had to finish some stuff up and he wouldn't finish in time for fall camp, um, whatever that might be. He's also nursing a shoulder injury. So it's not like he's going to be like, like, it's not like even if he was there, he would be participating much. He'd be in meetings, which would be helpful. But it's not like he'd be on the field doing anything. But that's Tony Livingston, who, you know, was an offensive lineman in high school, uh, moved to tight end because he also lost weight to play basketball and he wanted to keep the weight off and he wants to play basketball like, at Florida. We'll see if that can happen. He'd have to be, I believe he'd have to be a walk-on at this point. Um, but again, I'm not sure how that would work if you're already a scholarship athlete, athlete elsewhere. But Florida does not have any... Uh, basketball scholarships available so yeah he, he'd be able to walk onto the team i believe as long as he also played football and the, this whole roundabout way has been to say with all that youth and i think talent i'm very high on keon zipper dante zanders nick elksness jonathan odom hayden hansen arliss boardingham and Tony Livingston. There are a few names I left off. I didn't name everybody. Um, but I'm, I'm high on those guys to be able to hold down the fort as tight ends that actually play. And then there's other depth guys behind them, of course. But when you look at that room, do you really need to add a tight end for the 2023 class? Like, is that something that you think Florida should be prioritizing? Because Florida's already been losing a lot of recruiting battles that they've had so far. That's just how it is. They've been losing recruiting battles. Do you really want them to put their efforts and put their attention elsewhere on a tight end that on a tight end position that right now would be a luxury to add? Because I don't think so. I think you've got starters. I think you've got depth. And literally the entire tight end room should be back for 2023 unless people transfer out. But no one should be headed to the NFL after this year. Keon Zipper is going to be a one-year starter tight end. Dante Sanders will be a one-year starter tight end, assuming that they're both qualified as starters. And guess what? The 2023 NFL draft, the recruiting class, the 2023 NFL draft for tight end is going to be insane. Those guys should not be going out early. They should be coming back, trying to get a chance at the senior bowl the next year and hoping for the best there. So pretty much the entirety of this tight end room should be back for 2023. I don't think you need to, you need, that's what I'm saying. I don't think you need to add another one. Later in the cycle, if you've got scholarships available and you've got a kid that you're interested in, go for it. But I don't think you need to do that right now, and I think that'd be, uh, I think that'd be a bad decision for Florida. Like I said, you've been losing enough battles. Don't add more to your plate. That's that's where I stand on it. Thanks for making Lockdown Gators your first listen of the day every day. We'll be back. 
I mean, again, you'll almost definitely see me tonight, which will count as tomorrow's episode after commitments tonight, uh, commitment, and then in parentheses, S, um, tonight. So that, that's how we're going to approach that. For Lockdown Gators, I'm Brandon Olson. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find all my written work with Whole Line Sports. That is W-H-O-L-E-N-I-N-E Sports. Find Whole Line Sports on YouTube as well. And find my written work with GiantsCountry of SI.com. And I'll see you all, hopefully, tonight.